This is the news on top of the hour. Live from our studio in Georgetown. Kite Radio, 99.1 FM. Good morning. Welcome to this morning's newscast on Kaichu Radio. Kevin Smith here. Let's get to the news in detail. Considering the significant benefits Suriname has reaped from choosing to be a partner on oil, all oil producing projects in its offshore basin, Managing Director of Statsoli, Suriname's national oil and gas company, Mr. Rudolf Elias, is of the firm conviction that Guyana should give due consideration to adopting a similar approach. Elias was quick to note that the benefits, particularly as it relates to monitoring costs to be incurred, provide a strong case for countries to have a seat at the table. Elias said that this very reasoning underscores the need to have a national oil company with knowledgeable individuals who can be a partner of choice for oil companies. And moving on, EPA Director Sharifa Razak recently revealed that an inspection is being done on the internal mechanical seal on the flash gas compressor with aim of determining whether the defective seal needs to be reseated or replaced. This news comes on the heels of ExxonMobil's increased flaring from pilot levels at their Liza Destiny operations due to the defective seal. She also weighed in that in the event of the seal needing replacement, backup equipment is already in Guyana. And moving on, a taxi driver on Wednesday was shot three times in front of his 10-year-old daughter while fighting off a hijacker. Nursing three gunshot wounds to his left arm and thigh is 41-year-old Ralvin Maynard of Melanie East Coast Demerara. Maynard was shot around 16 hours at Kwamina Road, Bed of by a man he picked up. Maynard recounted to police that his daughter was with him in the car. Police are currently hunting the hijacker. In other news, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Anil Nandlal is asking the High Court to decline the request of APNU-AFC parliamentarian David Patterson to find that the budget allocations for constitutional agencies by the National Assembly September 1st were done contrary to Section 88B2 of the Fiscal Management and Accountability Act. In an affidavit responding to Patterson's claim, Nandlal argued to refuse the orders and declarations being sought by Patterson since it would serve no useful purpose. Nandlal contends that failure to circulate the budget proposal for 23 constitutional agencies is justified by the doctrine of necessity. Patterson complained that the proposals were not made available to his party before September 1, 2020, and as such, a breach of the act was committed. You are tuned into Kaiju Radio 99.1 and 99.5 FM. This is your morning newscast. We will return after the break. This morning, I woke up a millionaire. A digital millionaire. Money here, money there, money everywhere. I'm a digital millionaire. It's our 14th anniversary, and for the next 14 days, we're going to make one lucky customer a Digicel Millionaire every day. To enter the draw, just purchase any Digicel Prime bundle or top up with $1,400 or more for a chance to be a millionaire. Plus, every day, 100 lucky customers will receive $1,400 free credit. Buy a Prime bundle or top up now to enter. Digicel, better together. Welcome back. Let us continue with the news. One of the suspects that robbed the Brazilian businessman at his workplace just a few days ago was recently nabbed by the police during a raid exercise. The police were at the time conducting raids in several houses around the Bartica area when the man was apprehended. The suspect had been identified as Damien Hamilton of Victoria, East Coast Amarara. During the raid, Hamilton was found with $306,000 in cash, a 20.4 penny weight of raw gold in his possession, he was allegedly in the company of four other men armed with guns and cutlasses when they robbed two Brazilians, owners of a money transfer and gold dealership business. And moving on, a bar meter man who was ambushed and stabbed yesterday was able to survive after he was saved by a neighbor. Police identified him as 38-year-old Dalon Baird of Cassic Creek, Region 1, and reported that the neighbor was also his relative. Baird was reportedly ambushed by two men around 1 hour 20 while walking home. The men, according to investigators, stabbed him twice, once to his back and once to his abdomen, before running away. The injured man somehow garnered enough strength to reach his neighbor's house who rescued him. Police are currently on the lookout for the suspects. 
And the knowledge tell you the police last evening issued a wanted bulletin for 22-year-old Akim John, called Fine Man of Lot 144 Block F North Sophia, Georgetown, for escaping lawful custody. John had been arrested for the illegal possession of a firearm and break and enter and larceny. Anyone with information that may lead to the arrest of John is asked to contact the police on telephone numbers 225-6940-226-1389-225-8196-638-8440-911 or the nearest police station. All information will be treated with the strictest confidence. Analysts tell you the numerous complaints of traffic buildup and reports of criminal activities around the Reading Hoop area were the main reasons that prompted both the police and the Regional Democratic Council of Region 3 to conduct a road clearing exercise earlier this week. It is understood that on Tuesday, a total of six stalls that were positioned right at the Vreden Hoop Junction were removed by both the police and officer from the council, with support from vendors. According to a release from the police, these stands were directly impeding the free movement of pedestrians from utilizing the pedestrian walkway that are so designed. And that's the news of the moment. Remember to get the full details of the...